or Hernan. Um, hey everybody, uh, my name is Hernan Said. It is Ron Lowry. I'm the uh, Eastern Area Manager, North American Manager for Hazard Control. So I um, have overall responsibilities for sales and promotion on the Eastern part of the US and Canada. Um, in addition, I've got about 35 years, 36 years now in the fire service. Um, an assistant chief with a fire department in a volunteer fire department in Pennsylvania. Uh, so what we're going to be talking about today is, um, again, our encapsulator technology and its use for both class B, um, mainly what we're going to focus on today is two dimensional class B fires, kind of spill fires, that type of thing. And then also on just general spill control, vapor mitigation, and bioremediation. Uh, so without further ado, we will uh, end here with the presentation. Um, so again, this is encapsulator technology. Close a window here. Uh, encapsulator technology for use with uh, class B fires and spill control. First thing we want to do is actually get into what is an encapsulating agent and how it works before we actually get into the um, types of scenarios where you can use it and types of things where you can use it. So the general definition of an encapsulator agent, it's a type of water additive whose basic building block is a spherical micelle. Those Spherical micelles are capable of encapsulating carbon molecules as well as both polar and nonpolar hydrocarbon vapors in both the liquid and vapor state. So it can do it either way, either on a liquid or a vapor. Um, those, in, those micelles encapsulate that fuel on a molecular level, separating the fuel from the oxygen. Um, so particular encapsulating agent we're going to be talking about today is F500. Um, it is a 100% fluorine-free, non-corrosive, and 100% biodegradable encapsulating agent. It's UL listed for Class A and Class B fire suppression. Um, as you'll see a little uh, later in the presentation, uh, I'll show you some information that's also listed on the EPA's National Contingency Plan as a soil washing agent. Um, so that's where it leads to that last part there that it can be used is a combustible, flammable vapor and liquid spill control agent. Um, the really good animation talks about the F500 uh, compound itself, the F500 molecule itself, and how that spherical micelle is formed um, when it mixes with water. Encapsulator technology. The next generation of fire and hazard mitigation First, we start with a simplified version of a single encapsulator agent molecule consisting of a hydrophilic polar head which loves water, dissolves in water, and a hydrophobic nonpolar tail which fears water and will do anything to get away from water. Once the EA molecules enter the water, they instantaneously and automatically orient with the nonpolar tails inward and the polar heads outward forming millions of spherical micelles. Micelles travel towards and exit the nozzles, forming EA droplets. Micelles nearest to the surface of each droplet automatically break apart. The nonpolar tails orient outside the droplet with polar heads on the surface, forming an EA skin on the surface of every droplet. In addition to the EA skin, there are millions of molecular spherical micelles within each droplet. So again, kind of as a quick overview from what that animation just showed. So when the F500 molecule mixes with water, these spherical micelles are automatically formed. When that solution leaves the hose stream or a sprinkler head and a water droplet is formed, these micelles closest to the surface break apart you get a skin of F500 on the outside of each water drop, droplet and then millions of those mice and within each water droplet. Um, so quickly here, we'll go through the fire suppression mechanics of what 
that F500 molecule being in the water can help do for you. Um, so if we look at basic fire chemistry, um, we know back from essentials of firefighting, uh, you have the fire tetrahedron. If you remove any one leg of the fire tetrahedron, the fire goes out. So if we're you know using plain water, we're down here attacking the heat leg and the fire goes out. Um, if we're using a foam, we're putting a blanket here between the fuel and the oxygen, separating the fuel from the oxygen mechanically, and the fire goes out. If you're using a dry chemical extinguisher, um, you know, you're uh, interrupting that free radical chain reaction, the fire goes out. Each of those though, we're, we're talking about working on one leg of the fire tetrahedron um, to suppress a fire. With an encapsulating agent with F500, you get rapid and permanent heat reduction. Um, so we're removing the heat. You have the encapsulation of those fuels inside the spherical micelle, separating that fuel from the oxygen on a chemical molecular level. So we're removing the fuel, separating it from the oxygen. And then lastly, um, some testing we've had done by Clemson University that shows we can actually interrupt that free radical chain reaction as well. So we're working on all legs of the fire tetrahedron simultaneously as opposed to just one. So the different unique features of the F500, again, is that rapid cooling, that F500 molecule on the surface of the water droplet acts like a heat sink, actually absorbs the heat and transfers that heat to the micelles within the water droplet. Um, there's an animation here to go over that, show you how that happens. So again, you have the, the EA droplet, those F500 molecules on the surface absorb that heat and then transfer that heat to the, um, to the micelles within the water droplet. So as opposed to just using the surface of the water droplet for cooling, you're using the entire mass of that water droplet for cooling. Uh, the next thing is the encapsulation of the fuels. That's tested through that NFPA 18A section 77 spherical micelle stability test that shows us that we can actually encapsulate fuels and render them non-flammable. Um, there's your guide for uh, achieving that total encapsulation. It's a one to eight to 40 ratio. So one part F500 to eight parts fuel, 40 parts water, plus that kinetic energy of the water leaving the hose stream is gonna encapsulate that fuel render it non-flammable, non-explosive. And then the last thing is the, um, that encapsulation or the, um, sorry, the interruption of the, the free radical coalescence um, that we've had tested at Clemson University. For that testing, what they were doing is they were burning toluene and uh, they did several burns where they injected a plain water mist through the smoke column. And then they did three other ones where they injected a 3% solution of F500 into the smoke column. Looking for several things during this testing, they were um, shooting a, a beam through the smoke column to check, check for opacity, um, look for light transmittance through that smoke. So how dense was the smoke? They were looking for the soot accumulation um, inside the burn chamber. So how much soot was actually being produced by the burning fire. And then they were looking at the toxicity of that soot and smoke. Results of that testing when they were comparing F500 to the plain water is that in visibility was increased by 68%. The soot accumulation was reduced by 97% and the soot toxicity was reduced by 98.6%. So you actually, with F500, have the ability to scrub some of those cancer-causing, the majority of those cancer-causing toxins out of the smoke, thereby hopefully lessen, lessening our exposure uh, to those toxins and potentially helping with the, the, the health effects of firefighters. Uh, this is an excerpt from that Clemson University study with this information along with vapor reduction experiments suggest an interruption of vapor phase combustion 
possibly inhibiting the radical covalescence in the soot particles. So what that's saying is we can stop that soot and smoke from even forming um, during the burning process. Now let's look at F500 and some different class B fires. So when we're talking about class B fuels, we're talking about gasolines, ethanols, diesel fuel, oils, you know, both polar and non-polar. Uh, this first video here we're going to play, this is uh, E85 gasoline. So E85 floating on some fire. It's a burn I did probably six months ago now, maybe four months ago. So we're going to give this a nice pre-burn. Probably going to go for about 40 seconds on the pre-burn. So we're going to get that steel tank nice and hot. We're using a 125 gallon per minute hand line, 3% solution. So most you have to go with that 500 is 3%. So even though this is a polar solvent, we're still only uh, going to be attacking that fire at 3%. You also see here that when uh, I start the fire suppression, there's no special techniques that have to be used like you would use with a with a foam. There's no raining down. There's no you know we can't bank uh, or rolling onto this type of fire. You can use a rapid sweeping motion over the surface of the fire. We're actually encapsulating those vapors that are off gassing um, that are being released from the fuel. So fires out. I'm now just continuing to cool that steel tank. Because we're not a foam, we're not putting a blanket over the fuel to suppress vapors. We're actually removing the heat. So right now, that, that tank is literally pulling up. You'll see here in a second, I'm gonna come up. You can put your bare hand on that steel. It's that cool. You can pull that steel and that fuel below its auto ignition temperature. It can't ignite unless you walk up there up to it again with the torch um, because we didn't add enough agent to totally encapsulate all of that fuel. But as you see, the litter of the steel is pulled to the touch. Where if we were using a foam, you know, you would have the foam blanket and suppressive vapors, but at the same time, that's also going to be helping to trap in and hold the heat. Uh, this next video, again, you'll see the same type of technique. It'll actually be a little clearer here because it's daylight. Um, this is down at the Georgia Public Safety Training Center. It's about 40 or 50 gallons of diesel. Open and, uh, in the This next video is actually um, the same thing. This is a little more about spill control. So this is going to be, again, E85 gasoline. Um, again, 3% solution, 95 GPM nozzle. You're going to see here, uh, we're going to be spilling out a five-gallon pail of E85, then treating part of the spill um, prior to... Uh, Igniting it will neutralize half the spill and then go ahead and uh, ignite the other half. So you're going to see here, he's going to spill out the five gallons of fuel.
as you can tell, this was a few years ago when you could actually do a fuel spill and not get in tremendous trouble with your uh, Department of Environmental Quality. Again, we're um, treating half of that spill now. Now you'll see the firefighter is going to take a torch. He'll light that other half of the spill that wasn't um, treated. And you'll see now half of the spills burning. The, the section that's been treated with F500, that fuel's now encapsulated. It's non-flammable, uh, non-ignitable. And I'll take the hand line again, rapidly extinguish the fire. Again, just that sweeping motion. So you'll see he's now going to take a torch and go back over. We'll speed it up here. So now he's going to take a torch. As you can see, that spill has been totally encapsulated, uh, non-flammable, non-ignitable. So that was kind of a large-scale spill. Uh, I know most fire departments, the types of spills we're dealing with, you know, auto accidents, that kind of thing. Um, this next video shows the same thing, that kind of small scale uh, fuel spill. So with this, this is gonna be E10 gasoline. Um, we're gonna, again, spill out a gallon or a half a gallon of E10 gasoline. In this case, they're just gonna use a two and a half gallon extinguisher with a 3% solution. And in same way, encapsulate part of that spill. So you roll up on a vehicle accident, with fuel on the ground, um, you know, worrying about if you're doing an extrication, potential uh, explosion or fire starting. Um, also going to hit this front corner here of this spill because the wind was changing and they wanted to get some direct flame impingement on, the, uh, on that untreated fuel once they ignite it on what was treated. So treated both sides of the spill. Same way he'll get a torch now and go ahead and ignite that center portion of the spill. So again, the fuel on either side of that is encapsulated. As you can see, there's no, uh, there's no bubbles, no blanket to break down. Just kind of looks like a, a, a milk, almost like a 2% milk. Again, use that same extinguisher to finish the extinguishment of that fire, the fuel that's burning. Then just like we did on the larger spill, um, firefighters coming back with the torch going over the surface of the spill show the um, fuel's not ignitable. But we even go in just like if it was a foam blanket attempt to break that surface. Again, if that, that all of the fuel's encapsulated, it's not just a treatment on the surface that's protecting vapors, um, that fuel's actually bound up within those spherical micelles. Next thing we're going to talk about and look at is um, spill control using F500. So um, things we're talking about here, you know, train derailments, accidents, rollovers, tanker rollovers, chemical spills, fuel spills, those types of incidents, pipeline breaks. So uh, this on the right side here, this is actually our EPA uh, letter we received about F500 being listed on the EPA's national contingency plan 
Um, as you can see here on the right, I, or on the, sorry, on the left, I blew it up a little bit. F500 will be listed on the NCP product schedule under surface washing agents. It may be authorized for use for federal on-scene coordinators in accordance with 40 CFR section 300.9910. Um, what, what does that mean? Great video here that shows you why F500 is such a great surface washing agent. Um, so this is gonna be some motor oil, some used motor oil uh, spilled on rocks. So be it a vehicle accident, you know, tank overturned, um, you have a tanker with, you know, oil washed up on the shore. They're actually just using a deck sprayer with a 3% solution of F500. As you can see, the F500 rapidly solubilizes that oil. So it actually encapsulates and makes that oil, makes that hydrocarbon soluble. So rapidly breaks it down, dissolves it right off the rocks, allows it to seep into the soil and it can bioremediate directly out of the soil. So accidents on the road, you've got oil, you've got transmission fluids, um, you know, you can put oil dry down, you still have that slippy residue that's left on the, on the street. Well, you can now come in with a water can, actually treat that oil, that transmission fluid, break it down, even if you want to throw some absorbent down then to pick the, all the material up, you no longer have that, um, that slick surface left on the roadway. And better than that, what you've picked up is now non-flammable. You know, uh, it takes a little bit to ignite that oil, but even if you used it on some gasoline, uh, you now have, if, if you don't treat it with F500, you now just have flammable absorbent. Um, so as you can see here with the F500, again, rapidly treating that, uh, the oil that's in the sand, and again, the oil that's on the rocks, um, this again, solubilizing and breaking that down. So as you can see the before and after um, from the, the oil that was on the rocks, again, effective with fresh water, salt water, and you know, not always possible in the fire service to preheat your water, but it actually improves the efficiency um, if you can get the solution a little warmer. We talked a little earlier in that Clemson serve or the, the excerpt from the Clemson study about the vapor reduction experiments. Um, I know this is a lot to read. I'll cover it real quickly. So this was some of the vapor experiments they did. So you had a 250 milliliter flask that they put a liter or a milliliter of hexane in. Um, they then monitored that with a gas chromography, a gas detection device to check the flammable levels that were given off by the hexane and how long those levels lasted for. Um, they tested that four times, so they had a good baseline. They then added a milliliter of the hexane, and three minutes after that, they sprayed one milliliter of F500 into the headspace of the flask. They ran that test four times. Um, they also used acetone, and did the same thing with the acetone. The results of those, those testings um, for the hexane, the hexane vapor concentrations were lowered by 38% in 10 seconds and by more than 96% with 96% within two and a half minutes of the F500 being introduced. This reduction was maintained for the duration of the time that the hexane was in the flask. So that data indicates that an application of an aqueous F500 to a flammable liquid or to their vapors can eliminate the flammability concerns which arise from hydrocarbons. For the acetone, um, the, the time required for the acetone was approximately 30 second time intervals. Um, in that time, the vapor was reduced by 61%. And over the duration of the experiment, the flammability was reduced by greater than 85%. And that data was generated as fast as the equipment could reliably produce data. 
So there's the experiment side. Here's the real world side for that. So this was uh, an article from the Canadian Journal of Emergency Management about a hydrocarbon pipeline breakup in Canada where they used F500 to actually treat that area. And as you can see from here on the left, once again, the F500 proved its worth and that was able to suppress both the LELs and the H2Ss that were being off-gassed, allowing them to safely excavate and get to that broken pipeline. So we have the testing data and then the, um, the real life situations where the agents used and the, what's shown in the lab is shown in real world. This next piece is a field report <clears throat> from a benzene uh, spill at a petrochemical facility in the Gulf was 300 gallons of benzene was spilled. They um, treated, they broke the spill in half. They treated half of the spill with microblaze. They treated half of the spill with F500. They uh, treated the spill both with the microblaze and the F500 two to three times a day for three days. They come back a week after the last treatment and they took soil samples from a depth of, from the surface down to 36 inches of both the F500 and the microblaze sections. Um, they also went and did uh, a control section from a, a, a different part of the facility that wasn't involved in the spill. When they did the test analysis, they found on the microblaze section that from the surface to 18 inches, there wasn't a trace of benzene, but below 18 inches from 18 to 36, they were still getting between 200 and 250 parts per million of benzene detected. On the F500 treated section, um, there was no trace of benzene left through the entire zero to 36 inch depth. In addition, the section that was treated with F500 um, had better benzenes. It had no benzene concentrations though they were still detecting benzene levels in the controlled section um, that they had elsewhere at that facility. So in essence, what the soil that they treated with F500 was cleaner than um, soil that was unrelated in a spill that was still at that facility. Um, where that plays out um, is in, again, real life situations. So this was a, um, these are photos from a train derailment in Chile uh, where the F500 was actually used to encapsulate both the diesel fuel that was given off by the locomotive and there were some tank cars containing sulfuric acid. They were actually able to use the F500 to treat that sulfuric acid spill. They've been doing a lot of testing on F500 and sulfuric acid down in South America what they're finding is that they can neutralize the acid. They can take it to almost a pH neutral without an exothermic reaction when they treat it with the 3% solution of F500. Um, again, additional uh, photos from Don in Chile. This was a tanker that rolled. Uh, again, they had a sulfuric acid leak and the um, F500 again was used to treat that sulfuric acid spill. And this last one here was a, uh, another vehicle accident down in Chile. This were two tank trucks um, actually collided into each other. A tractor ran into the back of a tanker, again, ruptured the tank, and they had a fairly large sulfuric acid leak. Uh, this is actually video from that last tank truck accident where they had um, diked off some of the sulfuric acid to try and keep it from running everywhere. And now they're using a 3% solution of F500 to again, treat that sulfuric acid, keep the vapors down, neutralize it um, without that exothermic reaction. So again, another rapid way to make a scene safe um, 
without causing a whole lot of damage or as we know in, in cases with the fire department, we're not on scene for days dealing with it. Um, we can handle an accident fairly rapidly. Uh, this next series, this is from a um, gasoline tanker. This is out in Globe, Arizona, was carrying both gasoline and diesel fuel rolled over a hillside. They actually used F-500, so they actually, they had to get down and um, open the hatchways on the tank to get the fuel out so that they could then use a crane to lift the tanker up to the roadway. What they're doing here is applying F-500. As you'll see, the fuel, the tank's being tilted. The fuel is being spilled from the tank onto the soil. They're using the F-500 to encapsulate the vapors that are coming off and to treat what's going into the soil to keep the vapors down. So they're using the F-500 in this case, more of as a vapor suppressant. They had actually set up gas monitoring devices um, so that they can measure the LELs to make sure this was gonna be a safe work environment for the uh, tow operators to get down and try and retrieve this tanker from down over the hillside. So again, here we're using F-500 for um, vapor control, keeping the, keeping the LELs down, and again, treating what was spilled out that's now laying in the soil. Uh, more video of that same scenario. This is when they're actually starting to lift the tank to uh, bring it back up onto the roadway. Uh, again, using the F-500, in this case, more as a vapor suppressant. So they're uh, treating that tank and the surrounding ground with the F-500 to eliminate those explosive vapors uh, to make everybody safer. So they can actually make this a safe operation and get that truck retrieved and back up onto the roadway. So that summary, wrapping it up, the benefits that you get from encapsulator technology is it's one agent that can be used for both fire suppression. So if you have a fire involving class B fuels, vapor mitigation, like we just saw with the, um, with the tank truck where you're actually trying to keep flammable vapors at bay. Spill control, if you have a oil spill or a, you know fuel spill, some type of spill on the road, and again, bioremediation, where you can actually treat the material in the soil and it'll actually bioremediate directly out of the soil. Questions from the group? Okay, Ron, uh, thank you. I'm can I give you some information about the the accident in uh, in Chile about the with sulfuric acid? Uh, you know, we we are talking about with the people there and the spill start three a.m. in the morning, and they call our distributor in Chile twelve o'clock in the afternoon, and they ar they arrive to the accident two o'clock and they start to work in this moment. In one hour, they start 3 a.m. in the morning. In one hour, they can encapsulate the vapors. They can clean the, the road. And in one hour, they can uh, finish the emergency with, with this encapsulator technology. I have a question. Yes, yeah, Brian, please. Um. In the fire service, what's the most common way that they have been supplying this? Is this, um, is it more extinguisher agent? Is it a portable end of the nozzle application? Is it inline eductor? What's yeah, the most so, so Brian, you can, uh, but that's another great thing about 500 is any way you can think to get it in the stream. So my department um, for structure fire applications, because it is A and B, I run pre-mixed in my booster tank at a half a percent for class A fires. 
I also carry 125 GPM inductor with a match nozzle and I carry three pails on my, but I got a Quentin engine. I run three pails on both with 125 GPM match nozzle and inductor. You can use an onboard foam system with a Ronda pump proportioner. Um, any way you can think to get it in the stream, you can get it in the stream, again, including batch mixing. Is it mostly, I mean, do you sell these in large, like five gallon um, buckets where you actually put into, say, say we have a 28 and a half gallon um, yeah. poly tank for a foam? Yeah, yeah you, so we've got five gallon pails, 55 gallon drums, or for like the hazmat teams, we can do it in 250 or 275 gallon totes. Okay. Ron, Thank can you. you also bring up the TKO nozzle and show that yeah. device, like on your screen? Yeah, hold on. Let me uh, let me pull that up real quick. Hey, Ron, while you're looking up, I just want to add to what we were talking about. The uh, when we used it up when I was still working in fire service before I retired, we with some of our engines did not have foam tanks, so we put short shots on our front boost on the front bumper. 10 foot short shots that had the eductor already set up on it with 150 feet of inch and a half off of that. And as soon as they pulled up, they just, the engine would get out and, and open the F500 five gallon pail, educt it, run the pumps, and we'd have it running within 30 seconds to a minute after stopping the engine. So it really was pretty, it's pretty versatile. You can do whatever you need to to get it to the nozzle. Yeah. This is um, what Mike was just talking about, Brian. This is our TKO nozzle. So 20 gallon per minute nozzle. Um, it holds two liters of agent directly underneath the nozzle. Um, built in eductor that you can set from a half to 3%. Um, these have been coming, have been becoming even more and more popular. Um, let me see if I can get a video pulled up right here just to show you that TKO because a lot of times people will be like, eh, it's a 20 gallon per minute nozzle. The knockdown you get from a, a 20 GPM nozzle, in my opinion, is um, pretty amazing. Well, we're, we're able to put out a car fire with that 20 GPM nozzle in 15, 20 seconds. And that's, that's pretty much unheard of. Plus the agent itself is A, B, uh, D, so if you have magnesium steering columns, um, you're getting a mag flash every time you hit it with plain water, which is really dangerous to firefighters. I know I was down in Brazil when uh, they were explaining in Sao Paulo, Brazil, where the mag flash came right through the helmet shield, and burned an eye out on the firefighters. So he had all of his protective gear on. So, um, you know, this is something that works on all the fuels as well as lithium ion batteries. So I, I, I know people look at that and go, I remember being out on a demonstration. They said, we're going to get laughed at using a 20 GPM nozzle on a car. And then it went out in eight seconds. They went, holy shit. Holy cow. So I think Ron's searching for a video there to kind of just show it and show the knockdown capability of the encapsulator agent. Yeah, I saw some of the videos um, that you shared in the email, and uh, it was impressive, I must admit. Well, while Ron's trying to pull something up, I um, talk about another incident that happened over in Shelby County, Alabama, that wasn't a part of the presentation here, but it was Colonial Pipeline, and they had a... Uh, 250,000 gallon fuel spill and the local fire department there is Pelham, Alabama and um, we had presented F500 encapsulator agent for flammable liquid spill control to them and they have some uh, class D metal recycling also in their jurisdiction and so they purchased some F500 for that. Well, we got a call one day and the it was from the hazmat guy, Mr. Uh, Blair Sides, and Blair said, how much F500 do you have in inventory? I said, I don't know. How much do you need? He said, probably all of it. And so I said, well, let me go ahead and get, get uh, track of what we have. And so I sent it over, and about 10 minutes later, Colonial Pipeline placed a, uh, uh, an order for it. So the how they used it was they needed to dig down in order to get to the hole in the pipeline to effectuate some repairs. And as they were digging, 
you know, they had the LEL gas detection meters there and they were seeing vapors and they were worried about a spark causing a major fire. So they were using the encapsulator agent to encapsulate the vapors and the liquids in the area they were digging to make it safe to dig down to the pipeline. It was also used the same type of incident on North Carolina recently, just last year. Go ahead, Ron. Video up. Can you guys see my screen again, the video? Yeah. yeah. Yep. Yep. Yeah. So this, this was actually a training um, up in uh, Ohio. So again, that 20 GPM nozzle, this is good because you're going to see there's mag involved in this one as well. Take, takes me a little longer to get her on the car than I'd like. Um, I thought I was up there to do a training. It was their department training night. Um, and I was the only one doing any fire suppression. They put out 300 feet of inch and three quarter off the hydrant and I was dragging it myself around the game. <laughs> so they gave me a workout on this one. <laughs> so again, even looking at the ground, the little bit of runoff that you have, especially if you're in an area where you're concerned oh, with, um, with runoffs, And you'll see here in a second, here's your mag, the mag steering column. There's also mag in the seat frame. So now all we're doing, I'm just cooling the mag. Um, See how I reposition the nozzle here in a second so you can get a better angle on that magnesium on the steering column. You got to get the agent on the fire to put the fire out. Watch how rapidly it goes out when I actually get a good angle on it and get the agent right on it. Um, you know, even in the seat the same way. But if you look at it start to finish, um, you know, that whole video is a minute and 58 seconds long. Probably if you call it, I don't know, a minute and 30 of that, that I was actually flowing agent onto that car fire. We put that vehicle fire out with about 30 gallons. You know, when's the last time you've extinguished a car fire with 30 gallons? So, you know, a lot of times people will look like that when you're using the TKO nozzle and said, oh, it took a minute and a half. I can put a car fire out in a minute and a half. Yeah, with 125 or 150 GPM nozzle, you can. Again, that's a 20 gallon per minute nozzle. So um, rapid knockdown uh, with a very low flow. Yeah, minimal runoff. I think, you know, right now there's a lot of push on, you know, let's protect the environment and that fire debris is a toxic runoff. So if you can control less runoff, that's a real positive thing in the public eye. And with this TKO role, we have another question about, uh, said with increased knowledge of firefighter cancer, can it be used to decontaminate turnout gear on a SEM? Yes, you can, um, you can use the TKO or Again, if you want to use, you know, um, like F500 and a pump sprayer to spray the guys down and then scrub them. Um, so when you look at the NFPA standard on growth decon, they recommend that anything that you use has a pH between, I believe it's 6.5 and 10. F500 has a pH of 7. It's pH neutral. So, yes, it can be used for gross decon in a fire scene. Um, it'll actually help encapsulate some of that carbon and some of those carcinogens that's on the gear. But again, I take you back to, yes, you can use it to decon after the fire. If you use it to put out the fire, you're going to be exposed to less decon. Don't be reactive and use that to clean yourself after the fire, be proactive and use F500 to scrub that interior environment, remove the toxins in the soot before you're ever exposed to it and put the fire out faster. 
So you're going to make the environment cooler, less toxic, and reduce the amount of soot and smoke that's in there. So not only for firefighter survivability, what about uh, civilian survivability that's potentially trapped if we're talking about a structure fire type environment? Um, you can lower the heat, lower the toxins, lower the soot and the smoke in that confined environment, make it safer not only for us, but for potentially somebody that's trapped. I got one more. Yeah. Yeah, Brian. Sorry. Um, let me just get this right. Is this an agent that you would add to say your 750 gallons of water in your tank? Sure. Or is this, yeah, or is this something again, you would more put in your foam tank? So whatever way, um, I would say it depends on your department and the type of equipment you have. My department, um, it's a volunteer department. I've got some older apparatus. I don't have an onboard foam cell. Um, if I had a foam system, yes, that's the way I would run it. I don't. I run with it pre-mixed for two reasons. One, I, I have the TKO nozzle option. I have that on my engine as well. But to me, with a volunteer department, you never know who you're getting. Pre-mixed in a booster tank makes it idiot proof. If I pull a line, tank the pump, hit the discharge I pulled, I know for at least through my tank water, I'm getting a half a percent F500 knocked onto that fire um, until I get a water supply established. Most of the times, that's going to get a really good knock on the fire with that tank water before you get hydrant established. Mm -hmm. um, but again, if I had the ability, if I had an apparatus with a 30 gallon foam cell and around a pump proportioner, that's the way I would go. Um, but again, the, the batch mixing again, kind of makes it the nice feature of that is it makes it idiot proof when you don't know who you're getting, you know, as mm. your operator. Thank you. Hey, we have another question, Ron, that is a, a comment, but it's a one video show a firefighter walking through a spill. So using a 500 spill or liquid fire is much more safe than foam, yes? Yeah, so what you don't have to worry about, and again, you still want to use safe practices. It's not like, oh, I treated this, I can go dancing through it. But... Um, you know, that's always the concern we have um, if you're putting a foam blanket on is you need the integrity of that blanket to ensure you have vapor suppression. Um, with F500, uh, good, what I would say SOP, SOG you can do is treat that spill. Most all of us are carrying some type of, you know, three gas, four gas meter, some way that the um, explosive vapors treat the spill grab your four gas meter, run it over the safe surface of the spill. If you're reading zero LEL, you're encapsulated. You know you're safe. If you hit a section of this spill where maybe the F500 didn't get to, maybe you didn't get enough on there to encapsulate all the fuel and you're getting a 2%, 3% LEL, hit it again real quick, come back with your meter, you're back to zero LELs, you know you're safe. Yeah. Thanks. Now, we have a question. Uh, have there been any studies with air monitoring, like HCN levels? Any difference between using the product or not using the product? Thinking of overhaul air monitoring. Um, specific studies to reference, um, aside from what they derive from the Clemson report, and some other smoke scrubbing studies that we've had done. Um, I can tell you, um, I was approached at FDIC from a, a couple firefighters a few years back from Gulfport, Mississippi. Gulfport had just started using F500 and they had a structure fire. These guys, again, unsolicited, they come up to us and said, hey, we got to tell you this. We had a structure fire and per their SOP, they were monitoring the structure afterwards to see if it was safe to come off air. They said in the fire room itself, they had zero CO and zero hydrogen and cyanide readings where the fire was, where they used F500 to extinguish it. 
though they had readings elsewhere in the structure in some of the rooms further out, the actual fire room itself, their readings were down to zero CO, zero hydrogen cyanide. But again, not scientific. That's just one real world scenario where, um, where we've got information from folks where they've actually monitored and those were the results they got. Okay. Uh, I, I asked me if we have other if we have other question. No, say okay, you answer the, the question. Um we, we're talking about the spin uh and how we can deal with different spin and different kind of fuels. How, how we can work with AFFF and AR, AFFF. Uh, with our product, you don't have to think about this problem. You can use with only one product in different fuels and you can control any spin. Only, only to, because uh, we have a, some fire or some spills in, in South America, and uh, we have alcohol and we have some diesel of the of the truck, and the firefighter can encapsulate in the same uh, in, the, in the same way both different fuels. So I think what Hernan's getting to is you know. Even if you're using an AR, unless you're using a, a, a three by three, um, you got to you have to know what fuel you're dealing with, so you know you're proportioning in the correct percent. If you're using a one by three or a three by six, um, what's nice with F500 is regardless polar non-polar, it's straight three percent. So um, it, it does makes it easier taking a lot of the guesswork out, you know, especially. Vehicle fires, I think, are the, the prime example for F500 because potentially you've got lithium ion batteries, some type of fuel, class D metals, plastics, rubbers. Um, you know, that's the definitely multi class, potentially, you know, three classes, four classes of uh, products involved in one fire. And with F500, you can handle that entire scenario with one product, you know, uh, don't have to worry about, is it polar, non-polar? Is it a hybrid with lithium ion batteries? You know, there's going to be magnesium in it. Then you got the rubbers, the plastics, the other materials, who knows what they're hauling in it. Um, so it, it, it gives you that versatility that one agent will do it all. Yeah. Well, thank, thank you, Ron, to, be, to translate my, my English. <laughs> You mind me asking one more question? How long has this technology been around? So um, F500 has the hazard control technologies, Mike, 97? 24, yes. Yes. Yeah. yes. So we first started with this technology back in 1997. The big issue was back in 1997, there's two NFPA standards. One is foam. And clearly the encapsulator technology is not foam. We don't rely on the formation and maintenance of bubbles. So we don't mm -hmm. fall in that category. So we actually UL listed as a wetting agent because that was the only thing that was available at the time. Uh, I'm the guy who wrote a letter to the NFPA Standards Council explaining what the technology was and asking if we could uh, um, see their way forward to creating a new standard. And they did, and so the new standard is NFPA 18A, um, and, a, and the standard name is Water Additives for Fire Control and Vapor Mitigation. So I sit on that technical committee, and, and it's taken since 1997 to the current version to finally get the standard to have a little bit of teeth, a little bit of direction for the end users, how to use it and to really be able to quantify some of these things that an encapsulator agent can do. For example, um, for your Class D metals, the only testing and lifting protocol that's available in the world 
is to be able to get a UL listed fire extinguisher for class D. Of course, that doesn't really help the firefighter that rolls up onto a massive metals recycling facility. <laughs> and, and now we have an encapsulator agent that can help them to put out this magnesium fire. Um, but what are they gonna do? Order up 50,000 fire extinguishers? So in this new standard, we've been able to put in some testing protocols um, to be able to move forward to get the listings. That's why you see we have an A listing and a B listing, but it's effective on D. There's just no way to list the agent by itself. It's, it, so we're helping to create the standard. So uh, that's probably more than you wanted to know, but. No, that's, that's very informative. Thank you very much. Yeah, we have a, a, a question, Rhonda. Is there a reason not to use surfactant foam? When to use it or not to use it? Is there a reason not to use surfactant or foam? No, I mean, I look at F500 as another tool in the toolbox. Um, there's definitely a place for foam still in the fire service and there's um a reason for f500 so you know f500 gives you the capabilities for um the class d metals uh you know lithium ion batteries things that foams can't handle foams are great for large in-depth Fires. So when we look at the, you know, if you're looking at a decision me making metrics over, should I use F500 or should I use a foam um, for either vapor suppression or, um, you know, fire control? I look at it as um, Mike does this really well. It's surface area versus volume. So if you have a large surface area, um, then F500 is probably a better application for spill control, vapor control. If you have a large volume, but a small surface area, so you have eight gallons on the ground of a fuel, that eight gallons is going to spread out to about 800 square feet. It's going to take about 36 gallons of foam to cover that 800 square feet. Um, a lot of foam, a lot of mess. It's going to take about a gallon of F500 and 40 gallons of water to totally encapsulate that 800 get or an 800 square foot spill. So one gallon versus 36 gallons is a lot smaller. But you take that eight gallons, um, and I know it's silly, but you take that eight gallons and you put it in a can that has a 24 inch top that you're looking to cover that. 24 inches of um, surface area. Well, that's a small surface area, but it's a deeper volume of fuel. You're better off putting foam a foam blanket over that 24 inches to cover that contained air, that contained fuel until it can be, somebody can get there to clean it up. Um, in a fire scenario, um, they can work hand in hand. The even if you're using a foam, um, you read anything about foam, before foam becomes effective, if, say it's a tanker that's on fire, you have to be able to cool the steel. So even if you have a tank on fire, um, that tank's burning, the steel's hot, the foam hits the steel and the bubbles break apart because the foam is so hot. You can use F500 to rapidly start encapsulating some of those vapors. So taking the flammable vapors away, but more importantly, cooling that steel, removing that heat, which helps make your foam more effective. So um, there's still a place for foam. Um, there's a lot of applications that foam is still good for. Um, F500 can still work hand in hand with foam to, I think, even make you more efficient and more effective at suppressing the fire. No, I'm... I'm Good, Hernan. If nobody has any additional questions, um, you know, I thank you for your time. I hope you find it informative. Um, like I said, I uh, 
some of the things, you know, that the very specific, what we were talking about here um, today, you know, uh, if you're interested, if you're not already an F500 user, um, I look at it as the most versatile tool in the toolbox. Um, I think that's what one of the great advantages of F500 is, is depending on the fire you're facing, it takes a lot of the guesswork out um, from the line firefighters, you know, or, you know, if your department uses class A foam now, um, and you roll up on a vehicle fire, well, if there's fuel involved, the class A foam's not going to be effective on that. Um, but if you're using an AFFF, uh, you know, it may be effective on a fuel fire, but if the mag steering column is burning, you still could have a mag flash and explosion off the steering column. So um, just, it, What's nice about it is it's multi-classes and it takes the guesswork out of uh, what you're doing. And again, with the suppression capabilities and the data we have around um, what we can do to clean the environment and scrub the smoke and remove toxins from the environment, I, I think with the concerns, are, and rightfully so, around firefighter cancers, um, to me, that's the, the real game changer of the agent is hopefully um, we can make everybody's life a little bit safer, both ours and the public we're sworn to protect. Ron, I'm sorry, this is Mike. I do have one question for you. You're the, uh, at the fire department that you work for, I think you've mentioned before in your whole entire career, how many times have you used foam? Twice. Twice. And how many times do you, your department, use F500 encapsulator agent? Um, since we've started using it, I would say 90% of the fires we go to. Yeah, and that's that's the one thing that I would like to share and leave, is, and that is, you know, we, we made foam, but we got out of the foam business. Uh, we still make a fluorine-free Class A foam, but, um, you know, it seems to me like you know, the fire department will buy foam hoping to never have to use it. And many fire departments buy it only to get the ISO uh, uh, rating points for the foam. And most of the time never use it where once they learn about the encapsulator technology, they buy it because it helps solve everyday problems. The reduction of the heat, the reduction of the toxins, the, the black smoke turning the white, the versatility of A, B, class B, three-dimensional, uh, class D, the lithium ion batteries, the versatility of the product is, is so great that they find, like Ron said, boy, this is an everyday tool to help keep our public and our firefighters safe. So, my encouragement to everybody here is that foam has been around for a hundred years. And if you've used foam, I can assure you that you didn't learn everything you know about foam in a one hour presentation that I would hope today just gets you on the path to learning more about this next generation technology known as encapsulator technology and that you move forward and study more, ask more questions, because this can really help your department. Quick question, price point on this as compared to regular foam. So the AFFF foams probably run about 20 bucks uh, a gallon. AR, AFFF is anywhere between 30 and 35 a gallon. Um, the F500 is right in around $30 a gallon, so it's a little more expensive than your AFFF foam, way less expensive than, or a little bit less expensive than AR AFFF, and the, we're not sure how it's going to stack up. I see ChemGuard, Johnson Control just released a new brochure about fluorine-free foam, I'm understanding those price points for the fluorine free foam is going to be around 40 bucks a gallon. So you, you have an agent that can work on all of it, very versatile, and it's going to be actually less expensive than your fluorine free foams coming on the market. 
Awesome. Thank you. Hey, Brian, also when you, when you compare, you use so much less product than you would foam that it really, really is a cost savings like you wouldn't believe. Yeah, that's that. That's one. As Steve just said, Brian, kind of like the the example of um, the eight gallons of fuel, where you would need thirty six gallons of foam, um, and you can actually encapsulate that with a gallon of of F five hundred. So it's not a it's not a gallon for gallon comparison. You know, you can do more with a gallon of F five hundred concentrate than you can with a gallon of foam concentrate. Awesome. Yeah, I put my email on there. So if you guys can send me whatever you have, it'd be great. Sure. sure. Another another quick side story here that um, uh, we we have a department that uses F five hundred encapsulator agent, and of course they um, they they're in Canada, and they had a big like lumber warehouse fire, and they were just using water and plugging away, plugging away, plugging away. It was one of those events that was taking them uh, multiple days to try to extinguish. And the, uh, the the weather changed, the wind direction, and they had smoke going into a nearby hospital and a possibility of having to evacuate that hospital under a COVID-19 situation would have been pretty drastic. The wind changed and went the other way again. Then they, they contacted our uh, local guy and ask more questions about F500. They they uh, got some F500 and were able to totally extinguish and mitigate that entire thing that they've been messing with for almost four days in less than a half a day with the F500. And the question came back is like, why? Why, why weren't we doing this originally? We, we have all this personnel and equipment and time out here for four days, almost had to evacuate a hospital. Man, why, why, why isn't this the first solution out of the box? So we're now working with them. I've donated some product to them to do some full scale testing and to try to quantify um, some soft sided uh, cost benefits here, like uh, re the reduction of workman's comp claims because you no longer have steam and an interior attack. So. There's a there's interesting um, things going on here, and I know Ron is going to be involved in that um, in that study with that particular fire department. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, Mike. Thank you, Ron. Um, um, we, we have a lot of history here that we can share, uh, like Steve and <clears throat> all of us. But <clears throat> we, are, we are on time and we, I don't know if anybody wants to make uh, a last question about this topic. Simple question. Um, yes. What's your mixture, say 500 gallons of water? How many gallons do you need? So it depends on what you're going to want to, what, what you want that mix for, um, Brian. So like my department, I pre-mix. The bulk of what I run for is structure. So I pre-mix at a half percent for structure. So for that 500 gallon tank, it takes two and a half gallons of concentrate. And that gives you the... That gives me a half a percent solution. So it's a gallon per hundred for 1%. I okay. would, for your structure. Yeah. yeah, I would recommend if you're going to pre-mix, never go higher than 1% on a pre-mix. I yep. think, me personally, I think you're wasting it if you go above 1%. Um, yeah. Better off if you need a fuel fire and 3% to use an inductor if you don't have a foam system. Um, for, for most structure fires, I... I Half a percent, I think, is going to blow you away. Um, mm -hmm. What it's going to do. Awesome. Thank you. I'll, I'll shut up now. <laughs> no, you're good. Hey, great questions. I think if you had, if you have, uh, say, rubber tire facility in your jurisdiction or rubber tire recycling, which we do, <laughs> that's typically the only class A where I feel like we should be at one percent. One percent. Yep. 
for that. Yeah. And if you're having the roll, if you're having the roll out, so let's say you start with a 500 gallon tank and you put two two and a half gallons in, now you have a bucket with two and a half gallons. If that happens to be your call, just pour the other two and a half gallons in. Now you're pre-mixed at one percent. Um, you know to start the attack on the on the rubber tire. They're just kind of to me a higher higher difficulty than other combustible yeah. materials. Yeah, just just as Mike was saying, I mean that that's kind of what I do as a reference for folks. So your normal structure fire, garage fire, a half a percent's fine. If you have rubbers, plastics, to, petrochemical based class A's. Um, mm -hmm. You're better off, you know, going up to one percent. Hey, I can. Uh, I'll, I'll add that that's our standard procedure as well. We're we're premixing or we're attacking those normal class A fires with a half a percent, <clears throat> and we keep an extra pail. We don't have a foam system built in either. We keep an extra pail up on top of the uh, hose bed, and if we pull up on a fire where we think we need the one percent. After we engage the tank to pump valve and to recirculate, we just dump it in the top of the tank. By the time we get the hose lines pulled, it's ready to go. Andre. Yeah. Go on, Andre. Yeah. How are you guys? Good. About, about a little story regarding uh, tire fire. I have one story which is quite recent, last December. I've got a customer here in Quebec who had a fire in a pile of tire that was about 50 feet high, uh, 60 feet wide and 120 or 150 feet long. And they were struck and this fire was in uh, 19, uh, uh, in 2018. And they have been trying to put this fire out for a couple of hours. Uh, they had put on 50 pail of uh, regular uh, class B foam they couldn't, they couldn't put the fire out. And after 12 hours of trying to put the fire out, they decide to berate the, the pile of uh, tire, which didn't work. And in total, it took five months to get rid of the problem. So after that fire, uh, I went over this place. I explained them the technology. I trained the fire department and it pays off because Last December, which is just two years after the first initial large fire they have, they had already the technology, the equipment, and some good uh, unstuck. And then they were able to put the fire, the same size of fire, within one hour with about uh, um, one pallet of uh, uh, F500. And five hours later, every firefighter were back home instead of trying to put it out for 12 hours, <clears throat> this buried the fire and it, the total cost of the fire tw two years ago was probably something around uh, uh, $150,000 compared to maybe uh, 20 some thousand dollars of a 500 so a huge difference. So when we talk about price, you shouldn't be comparing the price of one gallon of product compared to one gallon of something else. Compare the price of the cost of achieving what you need to achieve. You'll see how much cheap we are compared to anything else. Yes. Thank you, Jeff, for your comment. You, you know, we have the same experience two weeks ago in Panama because a, a tire recyclers uh, start a fire and they start to use water or foam um, when they they work more than 40, for four hours, they call our distributor in Panama and they bring 10 pails of A500 and in less than one hour, all the fire department will return on the fire out. Uh, they, they start to, what is the, this technology? And they start to understand that there are other ways to extinguish this kind of fire. But this is, it was incredible. And it's two, way, two weeks ago. <clears throat> okay, thank you, Ron. Thank you, Andre, Ken, Mike, to, to give uh, your inputs. And you have the opportunity to make the last question for everybody. 
And if we don't have more questions, we can say goodbye. Brian, you have the last question, if you want. No. I appreciate that, but I am good. Thank you guys very much. Thank you, thank you Ryan, for, for sharing with us uh, your question. You help us to, to push and to, to give this information for all of the other people. Yeah, that's what we do, right? Yes, yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, I'll, I'll, do the, I'll do the last question, and it is to Brian. Brian, where is your fire department located? East Haven, Connecticut, just okay. east of North New Haven. Okay. <clears throat> yeah. So, yeah, it's a both comb combination department, career and, and, uh, and volunteer. I've been on the job about 18 years now, so. Yeah, I was looking, Brian, um, Chris Bagdis is our actual distributor. He was on the call earlier. Um, I don't see him. He must have had to drop off. He's no longer on. But, uh, uh, Chris, I you talked to I'm just other folks in the area. Dan Barry um, has been using F500 probably at least two years now on all their apparatus. Good to know. Yeah. Do you do you have a distributor in Connecticut or? Yeah, it's Bingham Industries. Bingham, where are they at? It? Bingham. Um, right no. there. The, the, well, they're headquartered in Massachusetts, but um, Chris is a firefighter in Connecticut as well. Um, he handles all of Connecticut. Good to know. Get you that. Yeah, Ron can get you that. Yeah, I'll get you his contact info. Area area manager and so he actually oversees the distributor there cool. sounds good thank you very much that was it that was the last question so this is Mike <laughs> Reiner signing off I'll see you all later hey thank you everybody Bye. have a good thank you. day thank you. good day thank for you. all of you thank you all for your time Goodbye. thank you all bye everybody have a good day. We'll see you soon.